everyone. Thank you for coming to my session on asking the right questions about work culture. This is a little bit about me. I am a data engineer. Um, I work out of an e-commerce company called Rhythm based out of um, Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm also a co-lead at two different user groups, the data platform Women in Tech user group and the Triangle Area SQL Server user group. I can be reached on Twitter at SQLML if you need to ask me any questions. We're not going to have questions for this talk, but I would be very happy to answer anything you have if you have any. So the agenda for today would be defining work culture, um, what to investigate about work culture if you're planning to accept a job somewhere, what are the right questions to ask? What are the questions to not ask? Um, a list of questions that I have found useful for me. Um, what we won't be covering is other interviewing tips and tricks and also what works best for what job. I'm not any HR or PR person. I'm just a techie like most of you here. This is just stuff that I have learned down the road going um, working 25 years as a technologist. Um, the questions that I should have asked and in most cases I did it. So let's start with looking at what is work culture. So this is the di dictionary definition of culture. When we talk of work culture, we are looking at what is common to an institution or an organization. That is the attitudes, values, goals, and practices. Uh, these things make up the work culture. So why do we need to understand what a work culture is? First of all, we need to know what you're getting into with any job the kind of environment and the stuff you're comfortable with. As a technical person, um, we oftentimes just look at the technology environment and we get carried away by it many times. I know I have, but a work culture is a lot more than the technology they use, and it's important to know what you're getting into in that regard. Um, it may not be a perfect fit for you, but it has to be manageable. Uh, the politics is oftentimes it's easy to manage if you know how to make it work. If you know what you're getting into, then that makes it a lot easier than it is uh, in a completely new world. Um, how many toxic people do they have? Um, this is normally the question um, I, I used to think when I was young that an environment is perfect or not the other way, black and white. But it's usually a question of proportion. Um, you have to understand if there are people that you have to deal with who happen to be toxic or even borderline toxic and how many people like that do they have? So asking questions and investigating the job, it's really important. There is no such thing as any job. This line is pretty common, at least in the US. Um, people often say that it's just a job or it's any job. You're spending a significant amount of your life at a job, so it's really important that you understand and you're comfortable with it to the extent possible. All interviews are sales pitches. Uh, people tell you what they are comfortable telling and what is going to work for them. In an interview, it's oftentimes an attempt to sell you the job. It may be, it may be honest, I'm not denying that, but it's oftentimes an attempt to sell you the job, and it's critical to keep that in mind. Uh, don't accept anything for just the paycheck. I'm not saying this from a very elitist, uh, entitled point of view at all, but a job is more than a paycheck. It has a lot of factors factored in. It's important for us to stay emotionally and physically healthy through it. So be careful on what you accept in this regard. Um, good interviewers expect to be interviewed. Uh, almost all the major interviews I've been in, uh, the interviewers give you time to ask them questions and saying you don't have questions is not perceived as a good thing. So it's really important that you prepare ahead of time and you have to ask them the right questions um, uh, in order to be sure that you are the right fit. And this is not something that's optional. This is oftentimes expected. Even if the job description fits, you may not like the culture. So we are very, very tempted to go with what is the written job description fit or what you're sold even on interviews. But the culture may be a really, really poor fit. And this is an important thing to bear in mind. This is why you need to ask questions about a job culture. So among uh, the SQL community, especially, we usually tend to ask our friends who work there on what what their experience has been. And this is a good thing. This is a great thing. This has saved me from getting into many bad jobs personally. But the typical responses friends have is that, yeah, you know, it's a cool place. Or 
things like they are flexible right if you need to take some time off or you take care of a child or if you need to see the doctor they are okay and yeah i have liked it here or i did not like the culture and it's okay you know if it works for you it might work well for you this sort of a thing so there are some issues with this sort of answers and there is nothing at all wrong with that it's important that we have to ask our friends but there are some issues here that we have to bear in mind first of all the one liners like the ones i listed above they don't mean anything uh and then people generalize unless they know what you're specifically asking they tend to generalize and say whether they like it or don't like it and things like that and many people are uncomfortable discussing too much of detail because it involves them personally or it may be a political situation that they don't want other people to know in case you're not selected for the job things like that and many people sadly many people have agendas maybe you signing up for the job will make their life easier so they don't want to tell you the negative aspects of the job so this sort of a thing is really important and um, it is critically important to verify with your friends and the the better you know a person the more honest they are going to be with you but it's also important to keep all these things in mind when you ask them that what you get in informally may not be the complete picture either so let's look at the types of work there are different types of work cultures that we need to be aware of some of the common ones this is not a comprehensive list but some of the common ones are like clan like small teams where well family type of loyalty is valued and it's enough if you get the job done um, adocracy uh, as it is called where a lot of autonomy place where i work is like that where it's a very independent individualistic style of working that meets the needs of the business and is constantly innovating to find better solutions so this is a very independent style of working uh another one is market driven this is mostly sales kind of companies that is driven uh hard by outside factors and based on customer satisfaction that's a lot of customer facing roles have this sort of a culture and then the last one is hierarchy where it is a big companies are old fashioned there are many layers of management and then their authority and accountability is valued um big companies normally tend to function in this way now while we understand all this what's important is to keep in mind where would i fit in my own uh, personal work culture do i like individual or team projects better do i like autonomy or do i like working with a group of people do i like to do repetitive work like operational kind of work and do, do i or do i like more creative project kind of work do i like more people interaction or less people interaction am i looking to just keep a stable job or looking to get promotions and climb ahead again these are not yes or no answers this is on a scale but it is important to understand where you are on that scale so that you can match yourself to the work culture of whatever it is whatever company you are going to work at so what to understand about work culture one is um, these are five important things that i have found that are personally important and i'm going to go through them one by one one is individual or team oriented second one is the reward process and how they or how they uh, tend to uh, you know appreciate people for what they do and then who is held you know who's the person who's the most influential and held in high regard and why is that and then how much of an introvert versus extrovert culture is that um, and how much socializing is required put to put it in other words and how diverse it is i know diversity is hugely important for some of us so diversity is an is the is another thing so let's step through these questions one by one individual versus team oriented okay these are the questions that i need to ask if i am concerned about it and most of us need to be concerned about it uh, will i be working on a project on my own or will there be a bunch of other people working on it how are the goals set am i going to be evaluated for what i do or is it going to be a combination of what i do and my team does uh, like i said with the earlier questions all of this is on a scale but it's important to understand where on the scale is it are we evaluated as a team for a goal or individually only and then how and when is it okay to ask for help in highly individual cultures you are expected to put in the groundwork before you ask for help you are expected to google or do other means to find out answers and then when you run out of options you go and ask your team for help in team oriented cultures it's actually considered a waste of time i worked at many team oriented cultures including several consulting shops where 
as soon as you need help right you pop the question out there somebody might know the answer it's going to save them time if you don't go and research on your own so that's the kind of cultural thing that you really need to understand and then how do we work with other teams uh, you know whether is it going to be the team lead who's going to facilitate the interaction or am i expected to hang out with those people and understand what they do this sort of stuff okay and the second thing is the reward process by reward i don't necessarily mean financial rewards it could be appreciation it could be anything so if you get something accomplished is is it shared with the team or are you called out as an individual for doing it and how good are your teammates how good are other people do they acknowledge um, what somebody has uh, has done do you have to do something really extraordinary or is it just a routine everyday thing to appreciate what somebody does Um, how often do promotions happen again this question may be dependent on what you are looking for in a job you may be the kind of person who is just looking for a paycheck and in that case you don't need to ask this question but if you aren't if you are the ambitious kind then you need to ask how often do promotions happen and can you give an example of someone who got promoted recently and what did they do to get there this is a really good question so yeah if you understand the traits of what someone had when they had to climb the ladder that might be useful to understand if you are going to be a good fit in that regard or not who's held in high regard now this is a question that i have found very important to understand because the people who have the most influence in the company if you are the kind of person who like that person then chances are you are going to be a good fit where they are so name ask them to name people whom you deem to be successful or who who you deem to be held in high regard and again success does not have to be someone in a high role it could just be someone who's really good at what they're doing um, what are the qualities that these people have then if you are talking to a manager ask that person do you do they consider themselves to be held in high regard do what they say does it carry a lot of weight with the upper management and very important are they able to speak up for your team when they need it if you make a mistake if you get something wrong are they able to say you know cover your back and speak up for you when needed that's critically important and then does the team have a sense of openness and honesty among them really important for me personally at least is that when i talk to my teammates there aren't that many filters about what's going on in the company we are pretty open and honest about each other and with with each other about that and that's really important if not you're going to feel really isolated if people are very political and they have their own cliques and they don't speak up on the team then that makes for a, a somewhat of an isolating work environment so this is a really important important question to understand the next one especially if you are an introvert this is a lot import lot uh, you know a lot more important than it would be for an extroverted person is that are there office events or lunches that you are expected to attend once in a while everybody does you know normally it's okay but is it something that's expected on a regular basis uh, how many people do you need to interact to get your job done is it just a few people and you just get a story and you work on it or is it a lot of people and does this interaction happen virtually you know is that team based somewhere overseas or is it in person right are you going to be talking to someone in person to get the job done so if you are an introvert you may be able to understand whether or not if you have to interact with a lot of people around the globe who are completely different from who you are then you may want to consider if you have the necessary skills for that kind of interaction if that's something that's expected of you lastly not but not the least is diversity how diverse is the team you are going to be on uh, they i have received a you know answers in many different ways for this uh, because diverse is a difficult term to define uh, 100% but it's a good question uh, to ask like how diverse is the team would at least help you understand if there are people who are uh, you know of different colors of different ethnicities on the team that you're going to be on and you know of course you know having more women uh, as a women in tech team lead i always ask that question how many people on the team are women and how many are going to be on how diverse is the leadership team the company's culture is hugely influenced by people who are on top so how diverse they are are there any women on the leadership team that is something you can actually even research outside of you know before going into the interview but if necessary you can also pose that question to whoever is interviewing you does the company have efforts in place to promote diversity yes this is really important most companies do have this but it is a good thing to ask regardless 
Now, when they made in the meeting structure, do divorced people feel seen and heard? Now, uh, even as an introvert, I know I'm an introverted person. I know this is a new question for me to ask is that I'm not someone who likes to speak too loud. Um, I like to take my turn. So do you have ways of making someone like me feel heard on a meeting, especially a virtual meeting, maybe where you can't see me or see my facial expressions? Uh, does the manager uh, honor that? And does the manager have ways of making you feel heard? That's really important. So to conclude, some of the things is that you may not have time for all these questions, but make sure at least some of them are answered. Don't quiz to a point where the interviewer feels or looks like, you know, they're not comfortable answering something, then don't push too hard, you know, back off from whatever it is. And then honor your gut feelings. Again, seriously important thing I've learned the hard way. Don't push past your gut feeling on anything. If you get a sense that the person is not being too open or if they say things like, I know I felt it is usually political, but I try to get by and things like that. Try to honor how you feel about it. Be honest with yourself. Uh, try to meet the interviewer and team in person. In today's world, a lot of companies try to cut costs by not flying you in. You know, if you are, they're located elsewhere, they do virtual interviews. But you can only really relate to people when you see them in person. So try to meet the interviewer and team in person. Express that desire in an interview. If you like, I'd like to come in in person and meet all of you before accepting a job. And when you're asking friends, nothing wrong in asking friends, make sure they give you the pros and cons. I'm always careful of people who try to oversell any job to me or they don't tell you what does not work you know well where they are every job has pros and cons it is never entirely rosy so make sure they give you the complete picture and ask more specific questions on what you need to know and always always about people not the tech i've got I've, uh, the worst jobs i've taken were because i thought the tech was everything and it's rarely just about the tech. In fact, the tech really doesn't matter much at all. It's always about people. So these are some references for you. And again, please, please, please leave me feedback if you can. Thank you.